The revolution starts. Yes, sir. I just saw you uh, get a blessing from a Catholic priest. That was heavy, man. I loved that. I, like, I ran into a priest and a nun in the corridor, never miss an opportunity for a blessing from someone who's dedicated their life to the Lord. It's sort of like you don't even really... When's the last time you run into a priest and a nun? It hardly ever happens. It's just something I see in films. I was overwhelmed. It was like meeting Elvis. It was. It was like an Elvis moment for you. I got blessed, and it felt like something. I, I, like, I think there's all sorts of different ways to plug into the almighty to plug into god go take it where you find it and it's just pretty cool isn't it i'm about to come in here and talk to you lot do a live chat about revolution and just before it happens there's a priest and a nun in the corridor properly <laughs> blessing down on me yeah like proper holy <laughs> god is great energy now were those sound effects yours or did that but a big part of this book is spirituality yeah, that's right, because I think that's where we went wrong. Here's a thing I heard that you'll like. The problem they said with Marxism, which is only really just sharing, don't be scared of that word, I know we're in America. They said the problem with Marxism <laughs> is that it placed economics forever at the heart of politics, when what belongs at the heart of politics is spirituality. And socialism, in a way, is just a Christian principle, just the idea that we're all the same, we're all connected, we should share. We can't be happy if other people are suffering. It's just a sort of a logical thing. So how did we get so far off track, Russell, when we're really now uh, far away from where we should probably be? Maybe we're not so far off track. Maybe the organizations, the institutions are being created that, uh, that after the revolution will be of great service to us. Maybe media organizations that are currently used to keep people spellbound will be, become purveyors and conveyors of necessary information. Maybe all of the corporate bodies that are around the world, the trade agreements that currently keep people impoverished and enslaved, perhaps will be used to distribute resources fairly. Maybe what we've built over the past a century or so is the infrastructure required for a fair and just world. It's only a small ideological shift that's required. It seems insurmountable sometimes because every time you turn on the TV, you see some new form of ugly suffering. You're getting bombarded by ISIS or Ebola or there's another crisis in Ferguson and like just think, oh my God, what's happening? But w what I try to do, Ron, because I feel uh, you know, I feel that fear and uh, disappointment myself. What I try to remember is that we're just dealing with human beings and we all want the same thing. We all want the same thing. We are, whether we like it, we are all part of the one living garment of God. We get distracted from that because it's more convenient for the people that govern us for us to see ourselves as atomized, individualized, and oppositional. Because when we come together, we will make the rational decision that it's better for us to share things than allow a small group of people to dominate us and control us. So what keeps us today allowing that to happen? I mean, we, we wake up this morning and we're like, this doesn't feel right, but we all do it anyway. I suppose maybe, well, for me, what it is, is like, you know, like, I've got selfishness, greed, and lust in me, and those frequencies are quite loud sometimes, and we live in a culture that stimulates selfishness, greed, and lust. So that frequency is spoken to, it's easily accessible, and it's easily fulfilled. Whereas, like, altruism, uh, meditation, reflection, transcendence, these are not ideas that are easily accessed. We live in a sugar coated culture. We're eating bad food, we're listening to bad ideas all the time, and it's the ugly side of us that is constantly stimulated and aroused. So, of course, it's difficult for us to go, my God, I've got to break away from it. Sometimes it takes a crisis for us to awaken. In my own life, when I was a drug addict, I only stopped taking drugs when it became unbearable to use drugs anymore. Every, every significant change in my own life has come about as a result of pain, really. And perhaps we're at the point now culturally where the pain is sufficient and significant enough for us to consider real change. So almost as a species, we bottom out. Yeah. And then we look to go, all right, how do we recover? You yeah. know, as a planet. Yes, I believe so. Can I turn the chair a bit? Because I you feel do anything uh, you feng do. shui bad. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that should work. Yes, yes. yes. I can rotate my head to you, yeah. but I don't feel like I'm alienating the people I'm talking to. Well, you really, I think just the people with cameras <sighs> are the ones that are nervous about that move. But I'm glad. <laughs> He got me. He got me good. He's got me good. <laughs> but I'm I'm glad that you did it because you felt uncomfortable. You make the move. Yeah, we got it, Ron. Yeah. Because like, like, like me and you, we're connected already. We've had right. some eye contact. We made love gently before we started this session. <laughs> and now symbolically, <laughs> symbolically made love. Not symbolically, Ron. <laughs> Anally. <laughs> it meant something to me if it meant nothing to you. No. Well, let me just say, this is, I, I think, one of the interesting things here, I think, for people is that we, we're not used to entertainers or comedians worrying about such things. 
Yeah, I know, but that's because really I'm a person in disguise. You know, like I, <laughs> I became an entertainer, but really, yeah. like I'm a person. And like, you know, when I get judged for being a famous person, you're a famous person. I did, wasn't born in Fame Stonia, in Fameland, in the <laughs> village of Fameville. I'm from a place called Grace in Essex, which is a grim low expectation type of a town like any ordinary American town and when I went back there except it's not American I mean there's that important distinction it's England but like uh, <laughs> I think like, I've tried to find places that it's a bit like maybe it's like Camden New Jersey maybe it's like that people oh god no <laughs> shit fuck shit you poor bastard <laughs> so, a man actually went god no man like us <laughs> I grew up in Vietnam <laughs> yeah like, like um uh, it's a normal town, normal people. When I went back there recently, I was astonished to find that a place that had never been particularly affluent had now deteriorated to... It was sort of heartbreaking to go there. People were wandering around, loads of people were drunk, just betting shops, pound shops. Like People are just gambling and buying cheap stuff. And I feel, do you know what? I feel there's a sense of spiritual alienation. And while this stuff's going on, while people are feeling despondent and despairing, people are saying, why are our lives getting worse? Why have we not got access to resources, even if that resource is joy and happiness? We've been told that the problem is like, uh, it's immigrants or it's homosexuals or it's people that got a different amount of pigment from us or people in a different country to us that believe a slightly different book to us is a better book than the book that we like. So how can this be the problem? How can this be the problem when, when it's really obvious that in recent times there's been a massive kind of uh, cultural robbery, an economic robbery, where a, a small percentage of people have taken all of the money, taken all of the power, where inequality is uh, what I would say pre-revolutionary conditions have been achieved. Uh, 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 Congress in your country at the moment, I read in a piece of paper, has 8% approval rating. At the point of your last revolution, one third of people liked the government. The last time the people of America had taxation without representation, they threw the people that were uh, tyrannising them out of the country because it was easy to visualise that the English were in the border British were an invading well not an invading force we brought you here very kindly <laughs> helped you to ransack the land and then when you realised you could do it without us you started killing us <laughs> some people have not forgiven you for that but other people like me see that as actually quite inspirational <laughs> you, know, you should get rid of the government you have now for the same reason you got rid of George III you're being governed by a maniac who doesn't care about you you're the, the serving only industry serving only corporations and ordinary American people people for want of communication for want of a sufficient movement are getting shafted well i think a lot of people in this country thought the revolution was going to start with barack obama the hope there were people in the streets people were singing people were feeling good and now of course they feel alienated from him that's why i don't vote <laughs> you know like so like people say to me a lot uh ah oh, you don't vote so you shouldn't be allowed to say nothing i say you do vote. You shouldn't be allowed to say nothing. You're participating in this thing. I don't believe that change can come from using the system that's currently in place. The reason I don't vote is for the same reason I don't drink nail polish. There's just no point. <laughs> There's no point. If you give me, if you give me someone, if you give me someone worth voting for, I'll vote for them. This is what I want. I want a society where the people that are poorest and most vulnerable are taken care of. People that are ordinary and working get a decent life and the economic elites that are currently are on some sort of edifice of irreproachability on some plinth of inaccessibility contribute to our society when we think about like oh immigrants crossing the border this is like a group of people robbing us ripping us off there is a little group of people that are robbing us and ripping us off it's an economic elite these people that like do you know like that the six walmart heirs Right, I've just inherited between the six of them as much money as the 150 million Americans that have the least money. 150 million Americans, ordinary people that uh, like work or don't work because they, I don't know, for whatever reason, can't work. They have as much money as these six people that all they did was emerge from the right vagina. That, 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 that's, that's me. Would any of you vote for that? Would any, if we were starting from scratch today, would we go, let's have a system where we give a tiny group of people all of the power and all of the resources, and then whenever there's a problem, blame the most vulnerable? Right. Like, we wouldn't vote for that now. Well, now is real. Now is happening. Now, in fact, is all there is.
So it's just a decision. It's a simple decision. The first thing they do is they tell us there's no alternative. There are alternatives. The second thing they tell us is nothing can change. Things can change. Once we accept those two fundamental points, then we can do whatever we want. Of course it won't be perfect, but we are hardly competing with perfection. We're competing with a system that is producing galling inequality and that is causing ecological meltdown. That's what we're competing with. That's what we're trying to do better than. If this system that created those six Walmart airs was like, look, we've got the six Walmart airs and the galling inequality, but look at the flourishing forest. Look at all the great work we've done with renewable energy. I'd go, yeah, you're right. I'll shut the fuck up. <laughs> but we're destroying the planet at the same time. Yeah. It's not good enough, Ron. Well, so if we're not going to vote people out, what do we do? We're going to go to their houses and drag them out like the French Revolution? I mean, is that where we go with this? How do we turn this thing? Well, I've, look, on one level, it's sexy, isn't it? A bit of that kind of revolution. But on another level, you know that, <laughs> look, you know, that the idea of drag... There's some people... like Who's that guy, John Bainham, that was filmed giving uh, money to tobacco, to accepting checks to, to, from tobacco lobbyists and giving them out to senators so they voted the right way? Him, for example. It's nice to envisage him being dragged from his home. But that's like... Uh, <laughs> That's not a nice thing for us to do. You can't, uh, you can't create love from hate. So it's just a, like a physics thing, probably. So like, uh, what I think is, imagine this. And if you're like, this is how I see it. If you are blissfully happy with your life, you're okay. I'm not talking to you. Mm -hmm. If you're not happy, the check this. Are you happy with the amount of rent you're paying? Are you happy with the amount you're getting taxed? Are you happy with the way that your debt situation's working out? Your credit card debts and your mortgages? Are you happy in your place of work? Do you feel represented in your place of work? Well, the chances are that if you're not, the reason you're not is because you have no power in that situation. There's no reason why the people that work in an organisation can't run the organisations for themselves, fairly, justly and democratically. We have democracy in name only. Democracy is a beautiful thing. Democracy is a thing worth having. Democracy is not what we've got. Being able to vote for two parties that are going to do basically the same thing, that is not democracy. Democracy is a beautiful idea. Democracy is a necessary for any civilised and advanced nation. But democracy ain't what we have. So, like, the revolution is for democracy. Collectivise, organise your own workspaces, organise your own communities. It can be done. Let's not pretend we don't live at a time when millions of people every Saturday night vote on some bullshit reality programme for some person who's a good singer or a bad singer or whatever kind of singer. The tools are there, the means are there, the opportunity is there, the possibility is there. Think of the issues that locally affect you. Get involved in those issues, because together, unionised, unified and collectivised, we have power. As individuals, we have no power. That's why we are sold constantly the narrative of the individual that we are alone that it's our individual lives that matter well when I was a kid the unions were everywhere uh, they got crushed over the last you know 20 some years and then places like Walmart or the fast food places never unionized so we have a lot of people who work in this country work 40 hours and cannot uh, afford to live on the work that they put in I think that's the big change that's happened over the years. Yeah, it's like uh, the rights of ordinary people are continually eroded and we sold the idea that that's somehow fair and just and necessary. So, like, I think, you know, forming working unions is a necessary part of it, but I don't think anyone wants to live in, like, you know, like, I don't sort of aver communism or for the same reason I don't like capitalism because these are sort of tyrannical ideas that prevent individual people having freedom. I think that wherever there is power, deconcentrate that power. You know, no glamorous, smiling individual having in power over you because we've seen it in my country we had Tony Blair he seemed all lovely and nice he just turned out to be a cunt excuse my language <laughs> in your country you had Barack Obama he seemed to be all sort of charming as well what did he fucking do what has he done I mean like you know like people will sort of point to positive things I don't know like that healthcare thing or whatever you deserve more we deserve more. We deserve fairness, justice. We deserve the things that are in your constitution. We deserve the democracy that the people of this country were promised. Thomas Jefferson said every generation should have a revolution because people, that's what happens is we're corrupted by power. People, you know, like I don't sort of, I don't believe in the big individualistic narrative. Like I used to think if you put me in charge, I'd be brilliant. But I know that if you put me in charge, I'd just become one of them. Any of us would. It's the systems that we need to dismantle, the systems themselves. You can't allow people to have that kind of power. You can't allow people to vibrate on the frequency of self selfishness and greed. We have to live communally, collectively, for one another, organised the way that we naturally would, the way that we would in nature. We are nature. We are part of nature. We have lost our connection to God. We have lost our connection to one another and now we are suffering. But it's okay because it's in us. We are it. We can have it back whenever we want it. We can claim it whenever we want to. We should claim it now. You make a, uh, a point in the book too that 
a lot of us work in the security industry, securing the money for the for the rich. Um, and I hadn't really thought about that before. But you go out of your way to talk to people who think about these things all the time and then get that message out. Uh, explain some of that to the folks. When I done my book, I realized that I wouldn't be the best person to handle the academic sort of side of things. I didn't have that good education. So like I like got this essay from Noam Chomsky, analyzed that. I spoke to Naomi Klein. I spoke to this bloke, Matt Stoller, who used to be on a TV program that I did here, who's worked in Congress for ages and ages, and he's totally disillusioned and thinks it's all like a total blag. I goes, what revolutionary ideas would you suggest, mate? And he goes, ban private security. Right, and I, and I thought, why? Hold on a minute, I don't understand that. And then he explains that he says that there are more people working in private security in America than there are teachers. Pe the elite, super rich people require security to to protect their wealth, and it prevents them from interacting with society in an ordinary way. It prevents people from being responsible. Get rid of security, he said. Then people won't feel cosseted, they won't feel safe, and they'll have to start behaving in a responsible manner. And I thought, oh my God, that's brilliant, but it's also terrible terrifying because guess who uses security me <laughs> like for example now sheldon is protecting <laughs> me right now in this moment sheldon is protecting me so i was like like i was saying oh no matt you're suggesting things where i'm gonna have to actually change me me i didn't want to change i wanted to just tell other people how to <laughs> but that's not how it works you know either you're in this or you aren't now the reason sheldon is here with me uh, is because uh, i keep saying things that i think oh no i'm probably someone is eventually gonna smash me in the face at least aren't they <laughs> eventually sooner or later so i thought it'd be nice to have sheldon here to protect but like you know like sort of but what i recognize in matt's point is he's he's 100 percent right that, that we're, we're, we're creating a sort of an economic apartheid where people can live protected behind walls protected by other people using their labor living behind a private army protected behind sheldon really when we look at it he's sheldon is protecting me but I, I don't know sheldon i hope i've behaved respectfully and in a polite manner and you have not felt exploited and that you're a guy like i'm a corporate elite that you're protecting Oh, yeah. thank God. Oh, thank God, Sheldon. <laughs> I hope that Sheldon doesn't it in the car, so I think, hold on a minute, this guy's got a point, and just kill me. <laughs> <laughs> Which he could probably do with his thumb. Yeah. But let's just say the Sheldons of the world don't care whether they're, they're guarding Russell Brand or a drug runner or, you know, who. It doesn't matter to them. They think this is my position in life, so they keep the system. We're all compromised. Yeah. We're all living in the aquarium. We're living in the aquarium of capitalism. How can we not swim in it? Look at the shoes I'm wearing. I grew up under this system. It's hard for me to not believe that fame and fucking and drugs and money are gonna make me. It's hard for me not to believe that. My whole life I was told, get famous, get girls, get high. I've, my whole life, so it's like every day I still wake up with that message. Turn on your TV set. No one's saying, hey, connect with God. No one's saying that, and people, people that do it, fucking the worst kind of people imaginable yeah. yeah so like so like it's hard to access this message it's hard to communicate it selfishness and greed are on a kind of fast track you know those emotions those feelings that energy moves quickly so there, there's a lot to overcome. But we can't, again, it's not about perfection. I'm doing what I can. I'm not saying I'm better than anybody else. I'm not saying I've got answers that other people can't access. All I'm saying is that I want to be part of this conversation. I don't think I'm better than anybody else. I've got no more obligation to change the world than anyone else in this room. But, and I know that as an individual, I can't do anything. But as part of a collective, as part of a whole, we are very, very powerful together. And the charge of hypocrisy, that's an easy one to level us. Look at the world we live in. Look at the world we live in. We can't make it impossible to enter this. You can't say, right, the only way you can participate in this revolution is if you are a celibate, teetotal, shaven-headed, curtain-wearing monk. Otherwise, who the fuck wants to do that? We still want to be normal. We're going to wear clothes. People are going to go places. I love West Ham United Football Club. You know what I mean? I'm not ready to be perfect. We're not competing with perfect. We're competing with galling injustice and tyranny. Mm. You know, um... Uh, uh you, you talked about the fame and riches and stuff like that. You took that about as far as most people can. Um, when did, did you find out it wasn't working for you? When did you think, I've achieved these things, I've achieved these goals, and I purchased some of these things, and I did the best drugs, and it doesn't work? Well, the drugs, I realized quite quickly because I took 
they were quite good. Yeah. <laughs> they, right. sort of, so they, they ruin your life quick. Like crack and heroin is a fast track to realizing that drugs don't work. That's like boom, like you learn quickly on those, and and the other stuff. Uh, what it was like I mean it's kind of a lot of it is going as I say going back to the place where I was from I just thought hold on a minute I'm from Grays I went back there to open a charity my friend was working at a mental health charity shop so I went back to this mental health charity shop and uh, you know they wanted me to open it and stuff and when I got there the town I looked at the town where I was from and it was all broke down and all people looked real poor and sad and I thought this is weird and I got out of the Mercedes car that had driven me there I felt I started to feel a bit bad and there were people behind a barrier and I thought oh this ain't good this is the people they're the same as me and they kind of look sad but like hopeful and I thought god they're there to just to see me open a charity shop it's kind of not a good enough and then I got in the charity shop itself it's a charity called Mind you know help people with mental health issues good charity whatever but like I thought this shop's not going to do anything like there's not enough stuff in here this isn't something that should be handled in this way mental health is this important issue it affects like one in four people and it's being sort of left to this this little enterprise here and it made me feel like despondent I thought oh wow because because I've spent my whole life dedicating all my energy to self-aggrandizement, to individual success, to pleasure, pleasure and power. I've forgotten what is important. I've forgotten what is important. And I thought, well, that is kind of... They, that moment helped to crystallize for me, and I get a lot of these moments, that you actually can't make yourself happy through pleasure. You can distract yourself through pleasure, and I will make mistakes today. Again, I'm not perfect. I could have come here in sandals, dressed in a blanket. I made a decision not to do that because I thought I looked cooler like this. You know? And I'm still, I, you know, love women. I love, you know, like... I it's, noticed in the hall. Right, see? <laughs> I'm not even sure all those people were women. So, one of them was a nun. I mean... <laughs> I like a challenge. Right? Yeah, what I know. I when, when someone says to a nun, can I get your email? I'm like, <laughs> I have no idea where this is going. <laughs> well, well, well. How about picking up another habit? Mm. <laughs> but you, but you, you got to that place and it's, an, it's emptier than you wanted it to be. It's the, the things, the fame and all just didn't feel... No, it don't work. Yeah. Like, say, if you're at the Oscars... Like you sort of, and they sort of think, hold on a minute, I'm bored. It's a weird feeling. Yeah. Like I, I mean, sometimes I've, I've watched it on the telly and I've liked it, but like you sort of think, what? Like, it's not right. Or the Vanity Fair party after the Oscars, and everyone just looked like they was tied up in those t tuxedos, like they were bound. And 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 that Vanity Fair party, it seemed like a paddock to me, like a farmyard, like some sort of battery farm of fame. It didn't seem right. And I could see in people's famous faces their trapped humanity, and it felt didn't feel right. I, I felt sad there. Mm. And I thought this thing, like and I'm, like you know I remember when I was a kid I would have given anything to go to the Oscars or the Vanity Fair party and there'll be kids growing up now thinking that the answer is fame and fortune and all that stuff and it's a deception and it's pointless now no one could have told me not to pursue it I'm too greedy I'm too egotistical I had to have it but now I so that energy is okay someone I was said to this Swami bloke once when I was younger oh what shall I do shall I become a monk he went no <laughs> like he <laughs> says you ain't cut out for it look at you you silly sod you got the wrong energy he said but like devote yourself to God devote your ego even to God give what you can give do what you can do it's no point us demanding perfection of one another perfection for the next world you know mm. so what I can do is I'm a loud mouth I'm funny and I've got certain uh, other capabilities that I'm prepared to exploit you know so like that's what I can give and we can all give something and as for the it not working business yeah I just, it's not meant to work it's meant to distract it's meant to distract it's meant to distract that's what it's meant to do look at the people why, why are these people killing themselves why is Philip Seymour Hoffman dead why is Amy Winehouse there why are these people like if it worked Philip Seymour Hoffman it's not like he was just famous he was respected lauded loved adored it meant nothing to him now obviously the man was a drug addict you know um, but like you'd think that given the cultural narrative that we're all buying into, being an Oscar-winning adored actor would get rid of the misery behind addiction. Drug addict is, means you're trying to solve a problem of sadness by taking drugs. You feel sad, you feel disconnected, you take drugs to self-medicate. That's what drug addict means to me, anyway. So, 
Like, there's evidence all around us that this isn't working. There's evidence all around us. It's clear where this is going. We're being told that you know, there's 50 to 100 years before the planet's fucked. We can already see seeping like a fog Armageddon all around us. Some people, Armageddon has happened for them already. They're already on the street. They're already fucked. It's already started. It's already started. Ferguson, it's already beginning. It's already beginning. So, like, for us, we have the choice now of, like, how to, like, whether or not we want to awaken and participate. And it doesn't have to be some sort of like a devotional sackcloth and ashes deal we can just sort of like right am i happy with how much i'm paying my mortgage am i happy how much i'm paying my tax am i happy with the way my community is run if the answer is no what are you going to do talk to other people are they happy no, no i'm not actually because no one is and so organize and become active and more and more we have the technology for us to communicate on a global level we know how to act on a local level it's possible it's easy in fact well i do agree that you don't run into a lot of happy people. And now, instead of copping drugs on the street, you know, the way we grew up, the pharmaceutical companies are inventing new drugs to give to people legally. And that seems to be a way to try to calm people down rather than think about the things that are right on around in your mind right now. The reason the world won't change under the current system is because it's working for them. For that, that's the result. Is that they're not going to go? Well, they're not going to change it. They've got what they want. With the right, are corporations in complete control? Yes. Can corporations do whatever they want without persecution? Yes. Are we making billions of dollars at Exxon, Monsanto, at Pfizer? Yes. 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 What's the fucking problem? There is no problem if you're them. There's no problem. The problem only begins if you're taking unnecessary drugs that haven't been properly trialed. If you can't get proper cancer care because you ain't got enough money and they won't release drugs that cure the disease because there's not enough money in them. We all know this stuff is happening and we pretend it's not because it's too inconvenient to face up to that idea it's too painful and ugly for us to face that idea i like this guy buckminster fuller he says just deal with what's necessary he wrote a book called operating instructions or operating manual for spaceship planet earth i think it was called spaceship earth and it, like in it he says we've got a planet we've got some people on the planet we've got some resources on the planet the systems we have should be to get the resources to the people that's it. And preserve the planet. Now, any systems that don't do those jobs, get rid of them. Capitalism doesn't do that job. It can't do that job because the system of capitalism is get resources towards these people quickly at all costs. doesn't matter what it does. It doesn't matter if it destroys the planet. It doesn't matter if it destroys people's lives. The system is doing what it's designed to do. Now, it doesn't work, so it's going to fail again soon. It hemorrhaged really badly in 2007 and 2008. It's going to fail again soon. They're preparing for what follows it. And if we don't do something, it, what follows it will be worse. It will be worse than capitalism. That's why $4.2 billion of military equipment is being distributed among local national American police forces, because what's happening in Ferguson is going to happen elsewhere. We know the most vulnerable people in society are the canary in the cage. Once they start fucking with people they think don't vote or don't have any power or can't organise or collectivise or people that are considered, I don't know, lower or disposable or whatever. Look at the people that are in the prisons. Look at the people that can't get healthcare. Look at the people that are homeless. Look at the people that are already on the front line because that's where it's going for all of us. And we're not happy anyway. We're not happy in our cosy sequin covered cages. We're not happy anyway. And it could be in a human being can be magnificent, joyful. We all know this. We all know this. So for me, it's a simple and obvious course of action. I think if we all have little moments, we feel like the rest of it is worth putting up with. You know, everybody will just have these nice moments, whether it's a Sunday dinner with their family or getting together with some friends. But across the board, I don't think people feel that connected on a daily basis. No, I'm quite lucky because I'm a drug addict and alcoholic. I have to get stay in the company of other drug addicts and alcoholics. I have to belong to community-based, right. spiritually motivated communities. I have to have daily contacts with a higher power. And it gives me a real release and a real connection that I think having this sort of the spiritual aspect of human life castrated has really calmed us very mm. badly because all of this material world is a manifestation of a subtler energy it's written in every code it's written in every religion on earth as in heaven as above so below it's clear isn't it from quantum physics that there is a microscopic ballet that occurs beneath the senses that governs all that all things are connected that the rules of physics when you get down to brass tacks are ignored they are ignored that particles behave simultaneously as a that, that an electron behaves simultaneously as a wave 
Uh, it behaves as a, a wave of possibilities until observed, then it formulates as a particle. That's like beyond logic, that the same <laughs> electron can exist in two places simultaneously. That is God just using different words. Everything is one, everything is moving, they're within infinite possibility. So it's not just in the esoteric language of the Vedas or the Bible or the Quran, it's now emerging into the language of science. But because the constantly we impose the template of individualism, materialism, capitalism over our culture, the normal truth can't breathe. The normal truth can't be expressed. A very an, an unhealthy idea is constantly fortified. So really, all it is is that we need to access the stuff. Like what they say, wisdom is acting on knowledge. Once you start to know that oh, we, we can't really be happy if certain people are if, if people are exploited or or if the planet is being is deteriorating, we. Can't can't on an individual level be happy we have to just dispense with that idea you know you bring up the recovery thing and i think uh i think it's kind of amazing that that thing that you're talking about is not really open for non-addicts you know but here these people will go into the basement of the church not in the church and in that basement quite frankly everybody is in charge you know at one moment you're a speaker at another moment, you're a listener at another moment, it's your time to take out the trash. Uh, and I think a lot of this stuff that you are talking about is bringing that kind of thinking into government and into corporations. You're right, Ron. Yeah. I mean, like in the book, I put some of the traditions of these fellowships that are based on anonymity, so I'm not in a position to say whether or not I belong to them at the level of press, radio and films. That's an obligation I have. If I were a member, I'd have that obligation. <laughs> <laughs> but some of the principles are every group is fully self-supporting and fully autonomous, except in matters affecting other groups or our organization as a whole. So your group can do whatever it wants, as long as you're not messing with any other groups or planet Earth. Another thing they have is, our leaders are but trusted servants. They do not govern. So no one gets in that position of like, yeah, I'm fucking brilliant. Well, of course they do. They're all maniacs. <laughs> but then it, the time ends. Right. You know, like, you know, like, and when I go in there, like, you know, sort of, I think, you know, I, I used to be all famous and stuff, and people are interested in famous people or whatever, but it don't really last, because everyone's there for the same reason. And, and you're right, Ron, because in microcosm, that demonstrates what we're all dealing with. We're all here on this planet. We're all going to die. For all of us, the most important thing is love and community and family and friendship. And yet we spend all our lives. When, do, when is the technological revolution going to deliver this leisure lifestyle we were promised? Where are these four-hour days? Where is it? Why are people working harder and harder to remain in debt while polluting their own bodies and the planet and told constantly that there's no alternative? It's not true true we know it's not true and we wouldn't do it if we were told there was an alternative if those alternatives were explo if those alternatives were exploit uh, explored and expressed and the new phone lasts as it gives you as much happiness as a blast of coke you know what i mean it doesn't last i went past an apple store i went for a little run this morning to go and get some coffee one of the few drugs i'm still allowed and outside the apple store there were people sat on cardboard boxes in the rain to get a new apple phone and it's like a pill. It's like they're making themselves homeless. <laughs> you know, like they're electing to be homeless to get the phone, and it's like a pilgrimage, right? That's the kind of thing you do for God. It's like I'm going there, and I'll sit down, and I will wait, and I will receive my blessing. And like you know, I get excited. I've got an iPhone. I've got two. I've got one for this country, one for this. I ain't got the next one yet. I just think oh, I can't keep playing this fucking game. It's never going to end. Like, but like, uh, uh, and you know, but like, I have things like that. I ain't better than them. I'm not better than them. If someone tells me here's a shop where you're free of charge, you can smooch around with hot girls I'll be out there in a the box <laughs> I'm not better than anybody else I'm not better than anybody else but I just like you know they, so the sad thing ain't that they're doing it the sad thing is that it ain't gonna make them happy how yeah. can it how can it how can that silly little device that's spying on us giving all our information to Google Facebook and the government how can it really help us I mean I love the little guy Siri or whatever he's called <laughs> sarcastic little bastard <laughs> I'm sorry I can't help you with that <laughs> Uh, how ha how has these ideas that you have now affected you in Hollywood? Do uh, 
Do they still want to make movies with you? Do they? No, I don't think so. I yeah. can't imagine. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, I can't imagine that they do. But like, but like to tell you the truth, I mean, Hollywood. There's no Hollywood. Just like there's no crack house. You know, like a crack house. I was in one recently on a police raid I went with the police and did a police raid and I went into a crack house and it was the first time even though I'm a person that frequented crack houses it was the first time in my life I thought this isn't a crack house this is just a house with poor people in it that have taken crack to help them cope with being poor a crack house is a good way of labelling that to make us hate them yeah and it sort, of, it sort of dawned on me in that moment that it was like kicking down the door of a terminal cancer ward like the people in there were like help us help us you are criminals you are criminals and you're coming to jail. Like, well, okay, help me, help me. It's like a sort of absurd situation. And the same with Hollywood. I know people that were executives at Warner Brothers that their main thing in their life is being a devotee to the uh, living saint Amma. I know people that work at Sony that all they care about is their children. Then people know that it don't work. There's no, like, you know, like sort of I was with Alec Baldwin a couple of days ago. He's a, a more fiery, intelligent new. New Yorker you could not hope to meet I mean but we we're like the same way as I got these trainers on and I'd like to still need Sheldon to take care of me like we're all just human beings with our flaws you know like we could all regardless if you've got 10 million quid a million quid or 20 P you could all give away all of your money and live with nothing if you wanted to that's an option that's open to all of us but that's more communist than the shit we're trying to avoid it's not like it's not like it's this or it's living in the forest so there's levels <laughs> stop destroying the planet be a bit more fair yeah so. that's it uh and most of those people like we said in the corporations even when they're pretty high up most of them are still slaves to that system they have to make a profit every three to four months or else they're in trouble yeah, they're, it's they're systemic, isn't it? The human beings are the same as us. The same as they've got kidneys, livers, pancreas, lungs like us. They've got emotions just like us. I bet if you met Rupert Murdoch or Donald Trump or any of them and hung out with them, I bet they're all right. In fact, I met Donald Trump and he was all right. He was kind of nice. He was nice to me. It's just... What I thought with him is, is you know, like sometimes don't you think like with like a football or a basketball player, you think fucking hell, you're not lucky that basketball's a thing because you earn a fucking fortune from something that's... <laughs> Basically, a bit stupid, right? Like, and I love football. I love football, basketball. Pff, I'm not American, but like football, like they're earning so much money from a thing that. What if that didn't mean anything? All like, right, for 90 minutes, you kick the ball. You got to get it in there. You know, this is how we dress. This is how we do. There's millions of pounds, right? And this is, I thought it's the same with Donald Trump. It's like you know that board game, Hungry Hippo. Do you know that? Mm. Uh, like it's like a game where there's marbles in the middle, and each of you has a hippo that you operate by a handle, and you've got to get as many marbles as possible and get them back. Now, we could, as a culture, decide that we are going to revere people that are good at Hungry Hippo. The people that are good at Hungry Hippo, they are our kings. They are our gods. We are the Hungry Hippo worshippers. And then the people that are good at Hungry Hippo, they're going to have all the money, they're going to have all the resources, they're going to get all the best girls, they're going to get the best wherever they want. And I think that's kind of like what capitalism is, because outside of capitalism, Donald Trump seemed a bit daft. Right. He didn't seem like he knew much. Like, I kept going, does it make you happy, Donald? Yes, yes, it does. <laughs> yeah. But Donald, Donald, what? I give a lot of money to charity. Like, he's just sort of like, it's like uh, the thread of consciousness is thin. It's not like a person that's a super guy or anything. He's just good at Hungry Hippo, and we live in Hungry Hippo land. But we didn't, I don't know when we decided to make that game the game that matters, seeing how it's destroying the planet, seeing how it's making more people unhappy than it's making happy, have a new game now. So we're saying we uh, what uh, the same thing happens when you play Monopoly when you get to a certain point you have to say look this game sucks let's restart the game you know and, and what Turn we the board over. yeah right but what we don't do when we play Monopoly is saying you see all those chips your children will get those you know what I mean like in the case of the Walmart heirs yeah it's they, been going on for <laughs> hundreds of years yeah they just wake up and go I'm doing great at Monopoly this is fantastic they're uh, doing so well yeah. Yeah. Turn the board over. Yeah. Who are you? The dog? The top hat? Uh, I would normally go race car oh. or top hat after that. I like the dog. I like the yeah. top hat. And who wants to be that iron? Fuck the iron! <laughs> <laughs> the uh, thimble is always the, the real well, that's been bought, uh, that's actually a piece what if you have to be something else like a, like, a, like an orange pip or a bit of marijuana <laughs> I've lost the pieces <laughs> stupid game so really revolution is about turning the board over and starting a, a brand new game 
Uh, and one, uh, here's, the, I think, one of the tough things, though. You bring up spirituality, and we've broken that down into so many pieces now. Yeah. What can we do so that spiritual people can maybe not drop bombs on each other or round each other up and put each other in, in the pens. I think, well, can't we get a consensus that in all of those different books that we all enjoy so much, Quran, Bible, that I don't know, like, it seems to me the most important things, and all of them have this in there, is be kind to one another, uh, don't get all greedy. Don't get all greedy, don't get distracted. All of them have that as the main message. People are too selective about the bits that they think are important. I think the most important bit is the bit about not being gay. That's, that's hardly even in there. <laughs> and, 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 and there's none of them have a bit where they go, it's okay for some people to be really, really rich, fuck everyone else. None of them have that. None of them have that. Go, Jesus mentions money lenders, economic inequality, all the time. He's obsessed with it. So get these money lenders out of the temple. You can't get into heaven if you're rich. It's just it's the main it's his main point. Stop caring about money. And then the Republican neoliberal right, like, who is their Jesus? Who is their Jesus? I don't want to worship that guy. He sounds awful. It's like Donald Trump with long hair. <laughs> <laughs> at the sides. And a cloud on top. <laughs> that sort of willpower haircut that he has. <laughs> held together by belief. And that... <laughs> And like it, like in the same with you know, it's only like it is just a choice. Like you know, guess how the Dutch economy collapsed, right? Everyone was really, really into tulips. Everyone and the fucking Dutch, they were rinsing it on the tulip front. They had the best tulips. They had the most tulips. Then one day everyone went, "Fuck tulips!" And that was the end. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck tulips. No, but tulips, tulips. <laughs> Fuck them. <laughs> That's who invented the red light district and the marijuana trade. <laughs> They're still reeling. Yeah. All we have to do is stop believing in this idea and it's over. That's all we have to do. It's that, well, that's why they have to invest so much money in media broadcasting one message, in a military and a police force that holds people down, because as soon as we go, hey, hang on, it's over. That's it, it's over. The minute people go onto the streets, disobey, don't pay their taxes, don't pay their mortgages, don't pay their credit cards, come together, create their own communities and their own systems that are fair, live lives built around the values that we actually feel, then it's over. They know that. They know that. And that's why we have to be very loving to the police, because we don't want them to kill us when this Ooh. shit kicks off. Well, you know, most of the values that we get, let's say whether it's patriotism or religious values, are brought to us very early in life. Uh... I don't. I think that's the only time I ever saw, said the Pledge of Allegiance. I never have to say it now as an adult, but as a little kid, it was a very big deal mm. to stand up and everyone face the flag together. And here we were, pledging our allegiance to a flag. It's kind of crazy now as an adult, but that's what they do to us with with everything. Yes. They get to us when we're really, really little. It's really important that we, as responsible and awake people. Uh, remind children of what is important. Remind people that uh, there are many very beautiful things about America, but America is just an idea. Uh, England is just an idea. It's just a concept like karate or Cheerios. It's only there if you believe in it. If you believe uh, that, that, you know, and the America I believe in is the America that created the civil rights movement, the, the America that created rock and roll, the America that creates so much great culture and is responsible for so many great ideas. I don't believe in this new America that the neoliberal right are trying to create, going around the world, causing wars, stealing resources, the same as my country did when we were the most country, powerful country in the world. I don't believe in that. I believe in ordinary people and the right for us to come together and live our own lives in the pursuit of happiness things that are in the fucking constitution but are ignored except for them they for them they have socialism when their big institutions and banks fail they quantitatively ease their way out of it they have socialism already for the rich they know those values are correct it's just for us that they don't want sharing it's just for us they don't want connectivity and community I think, though, it goes back to something you said earlier, too, though, about bottoming out. Until this thing crashes, I don't know whether we will make a new game. I think we're going to play this out mm. until it's as so painful that it's unbelievable. Well, that's what I did as an individual, Ron. So maybe, maybe that is necessary. But we're, the thing is, we're approaching that crisis. Yeah. We're approaching that crisis. The only way it matters is that, that you know we have to be an expression of what is the. Uh, I mean, who? What is the transcendent and absolute? 
reality? What is it that we are an expression of here? What is it that we're all feeling? What is it that we are part of here? For me, it's the, you know, it, it may take that. It may take that crisis. Perhaps it will. But the fact is I've, that that is probably coming quite soon. My individual revolution has already occurred. It's not been a total success. I'm not perfect. I still wear these shoes, but I'm a lot better than I was. We're not looking for perfection, though. We're just looking for improvement. And I, to tell you the truth, I already know that how, how parliamentary process and probably how democracy works in this country is they won't yield anything until you make it impossible for them to not continue. Until, until you say, for example, no money in politics, no money in politics, until you make it impossible, they'll just continue. They'll just continue like children. You know, you have to make it impossible for them to do what they want to do, I guess. Uh, don't be frightened about it. It will play itself out. What I think is that if something has resonance, if it's in me and if it's in you, it will find expression. It will find expression. We just have to be focused together as individuals in a community and not be frightened and on an individual basis try to live decent lives. And I think that it will take care of itself. None of us are God, but we are all taken care of by God. The book is Revolution. Russell Brand is with us. And I promised some of the folks in this room that you would answer some questions uh, with them. And, and how, by the way, are you enjoying going around talking about these things? Because it, a lot. Yeah. Uh, I was it, scared at first. Yeah. I mean, it is completely different. Uh, I don't know how far we go back before an entertainer did this. Uh, you know, Lenny Bruce, and you know how that turned out. Bill Hicks spent some time talking about some of these ideas. But it's a very, very rare thing, I think, for an entertainer to do. Um, yeah, over here we have. Uh, you had written a piece about Margaret Thatcher uh, for The Guardian, I think maybe 2013 when she passed. Um, I just really enjoyed it, but did you ever get to make the comedy sketch that you talked about uh, with her being carted off by kidnappers? No. I like revisionist history. I like the, I like the idea, wouldn't it be a funny idea? I, when, I, when I saw Margaret Thatcher, uh, she was watering a rose garden in... Uh, towards the end of her life they, 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 like, I, we was, me and my mate were walking around London my mate knows London well so he can go look come through this door you're allowed in there and I'm like what are we allowed in here yeah yeah no one knows but you can do it so he took us in this place Margaret Thatcher all old was watering some roses and, uh, and I was like, and the, like, we could, like and the geezer like some plumber or whatever goes uh, that's Margaret Thatcher over there she comes here every Sunday to water the roses and I was like fucking hell because like, this woman was like the queen of our country when we were kids Margaret Thatcher you know and uh and I see her and she looked all frail and she's just a human being. She's just a human being. And uh and I thought it crossed my mind to kill her. <laughs> like, you know, just like just been the same way it always crosses my mind to jump off of buildings and smash stuff. I mean, it just crosses my mind. My mind's stupid. But then I thought, like, uh, you know, but I felt sad and I felt humanity and I felt love for her. And I sometimes think that love must be the answer. How would they, like, if instead of when we're next protesting, instead of shouting, like, aggressive stuff, what if we're just sort of going to David Cameron or Barack Obama or whoever? We love you. Come on. You could do better. I love you. I love you. Like, sort of try to cheer them up. Maybe it will confuse them. Like, yeah. What is this love? <laughs> like, but anyway, when I saw her I thought it would be funny if someone like if you kidnap Margaret Thatcher and like you know you're holding her to ransom but then you'd have to deal with her <laughs> like she's an intense person what on earth are you doing put me down it would be really hard to dominate Margaret Thatcher <laughs> I think one of my friends was commissioned to write a poem about her for like a lefty kind of organisation, you know, and he said, so he researched her on YouTube and he said in the end he had to stop because if you watch her on the telly, you start liking her because she's so fucking intense and powerful. Like, and you think it's attractive, you know, when people are like that. I see there was some, there was a TV show where, like a kid's TV show that she was on in Norway for some reason. I've never fully understood it, but look at it on YouTube. It's funny. Where the presenter goes, oh, at the end of every show, we ask our guest to jump up and down. It's just a bit of fun. Kofi Annan from the UN, he did it when he was on. And she goes, Absolutely not. <laughs> nothing could compel me. Absolutely nothing. No, no, no. You just think that one's not taking any shit. You know, like if that people ask me, I'll just go, all right. You know, and it's powerful and admirable. Interesting person. Um, isn't that always interesting, though? Once you get to meet people and know them a little bit, you find out most of the time they're not the devil, that they've got something that they're attempting to do something for positive reasons just like we talked about with drugs you take drugs for a positive right. reason yeah the positive know? impulse that's interesting yeah. yeah hitler probably yeah well he didn't go ha, 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 yeah. did he? he was like i've got to get this done it's the best thing i've thought about it for ages <laughs> this is the answer yeah. like i bet if you spent ages with him you go well, he's trying his best yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, 
<laughs> but he just we did. He was a bit out of whack with the frequency of pure consciousness. What with the old <laughs> yeah. genocides, you but know. He, but he actually probably did get home and go. I give and I give and I give and no one gives a shit. <laughs> it's really <laughs> driving me crazy. <laughs> Did, no one seems to know how hard it is to run this like. Yeah. I'm trying my best. Like, look at the mood he was in. He was furious. Yeah. It's yeah. unappreciated. Yeah. You ungrateful bastards. Yeah. Jesus, do you want to calm down? Yeah. Yeah, it's over here. I was just thinking about your brand new book just sitting over there and Thank was wondering about uh, favorite pages. Ah, oh, yeah, there's a good bit in here that I like. Uh, there's a bit when... I was in the Marines for 20 hours, like, uh, because it's hard to be in the Marines. Like, I, did, I was in the Marines, can you imagine the US Marine Corps, look at me. <laughs> I was in the Marines. <laughs> it went badly. They were nice, actually. They were so kind to me and lovely, and I loved them Marines, as a matter of fact. But uh, I wasn't well suited to it. I don't have the right personality. Another word, so they made me do an assault course. Another word for obstacle course is assault course. And I can see how both terms have flourished because when I finally embarked on the horrific sequence of logs and fences and nets and ropes, assaulted is how I felt. They may as well have called it a humiliation course. The other Marines, that's right, other Marines, hopped, zipped and sauntered across each awful vicissitude like Butch Nijinsky's. <laughs> then came my turn. I hate doing things that I'm shit at, especially in front of people who are good at them. The only way that obstacle course could have been made more traumatic is if they'd brought along a girl I fancied to watch. <laughs> With each tentative tiptoe and stumble, I had to inwardly assure myself that I was a good comedian and that my life was not pointless. I am addicted to comfort, I thought, as I tumbled into the wood chips. I have become divorced from nature. I don't know what the names of the trees and birds are. I don't know what berries to eat or which stars will guide me home. I don't know how to sleep outside in a wood or how to skin a rabbit. We have become like living cutlets, sanitised into cellular ineptitude. They say that the supermarkets have three days worth of food, that if there was a power cut in three days the food would spoil, that if ATM machines stopped working, if cars couldn't be filled with fuel, if homes were denied warmth within three days we'd be roaming the streets like pampered savages, like urban zebras with nowhere to graze. The comfort has become a prison. We've allowed them to turn us into waddling pipkins. What is civilization but dependency? Now I'm not suggesting we need to become supermen. That solution has been averred before and did not end well. Prisoners of comfort, we dread the apocalypse. What will we do without our pre-packed meal and cosy jails and soporific glowing screens rocking us comatose. So that's a passage that I enjoyed from the book that talks about life in the Marines. Russell, how do you write? Do you sit down and write? Do you dictate yeah. it? Yeah. I remove all other possibilities then I can write. Like, if there's anything else that I could be doing, I'll do it, you know? Mm. Like, uh, wanking, I'd rather do wanking. <laughs> uh, eating, I'd rather do that. Walking around, I'd rather do it. Like, you know, so I have to go, right, don't, then nothing else. Now write. And then I always enjoy it once a minute. Once a minute, I love it. But, like, I have to take everything else out of the picture. Everything else has to be done. No one can roll a ball by you or off. You'll, you'll chase yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, I'll do anything. I'll do yeah. anything to avoid, oh, I better go and play with the dog. Oh, I better look out the window. Like, if there's any other options, I'll, I'll take them. There's something about it. I'm averse to that kind of work for some reason. I don't know why. Uh, how is writing this different from writing your act? You know, when you, when you write your stand up, I don't, when I do stand up, I don't write it down. I just bullet point ideas. Normally it's things that I've found humiliating or embarrassing. I just make a note that was humiliating and embarrassing. Never ever tell anybody that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a good place to start for you. Yeah, yeah. If you yeah. think you don't want anyone to ever know it, then that's, it's probably funny, you know. Uh, next uh, question we have over here. Oh, um, the, title, the title of your book is uh, Revolution. Uh, things with, rev with revolutions that since the dawn of human history, when there's a revolution, people die. A lot of people die horribly, which is what makes me fearful of the term. And I was wondering if we're at a time, and I guess in our evolution, where we can really change, like, like, are we yet civil enough to have this kind of great change before a crisis without so many, the cost of lives and people, can we like, I guess revolutionize the revolution. <laughs> like, well, I hope that, yeah, I think you're right, and I think it's an important point that you raise, mate, because no one wants a situation that's worse. No one wants us to sort of induce a crisis, but there have actually been revolutions, like the Indian Revolution, while there was brutality practiced upon the uh, Indian revolutionaries that threw out uh, the British, ungrateful, after we <laughs> gave them trains. Like, uh, yeah, like... <clears throat> 
they like they were not non-violent. They were absolutely committed to non-violence. And more recently, in Iceland, there was a revolution when their government and their financial industry plunged them into crisis. And like in our countries, the, they went, oh, we're just going to bail out these guys. The Icelandic people went, you fucking ain't. And they kicked out their government and they kicked out the financial industries. And guess what? No one could do anything because our compliance is a necessary ingredient. Now, I know the word revolution, people immediately start thinking of like Kalashnikovs and barricades, you know, but by revolution, I simply mean, like as Albert Einstein said, change cannot come from the system that created the problem. You've got to get outside of that system. And as I said before, putting myself very neatly in a line with Einstein, <laughs> for them, it ain't a problem. Yeah. For them, it ain't a problem. They've got what they want. This is what they want. It's going really well for them. So we have to help them. We have to help them to realise. Now, we can't do that through violence because then that's kind of, we wanted not violence. If it's like, if you don't like barbarism, it can't be you just don't like other people's barbarism. You've got to not like barbarism. If your principle is non-violence and you don't want people in other countries being violent, then you can't solve that problem with violence because we just agreed, didn't we, that the problem was violence. So... Violence, we can't have that. And we don't know what the response will be. The response will be, ah, oh, these people are selfish, these people are hypocrites, these people are greedy, oh, we have to put them in prison, oh, they're, they're fucking children. I mean, they'll, they'll find some way of saying, but it's because they don't want change, because they want it to stay like this. But they, like us, are part of the living garment of God. And we have to help them. We have to help them by showing them. And I suppose, like, on an individual basis, I have to improve and become a better person. I have to be less selfish and greedy and more patient and more tolerant and more loving and serve more people, be more in more service. When I sit, not in all seriousness, when I chat to that nun and priest, and we all know Catholicism doesn't come without fucking problems, you know, like, I felt cool. I liked it. I liked talking to that nun especially. I don't know who she is. She presumably has got she's a radio station here at Sirius, I'm guessing, right? Yes. She's, she's a good woman. You could yeah. tell that that person is not on the frequency of, hopefully my radio show will go well, and then I'll get a new car. <laughs> 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 she's, she's, she's not, that, that's not where she's vibrating. And whenever we meet people like that, it's inspiring to us because their freedom is, is infectious. So I suppose it, we have to cultivate in ourselves that freedom, that realisation, that knowledge that we have freedom is accessible to us, that God is within us, the kingdom of heaven is within. Be still and know that I am God. You know, they're telling us the answers. The answers are all around us and we have to find it in ourselves very gently and very lovingly and acknowledge that we want things to change. If we don't want things to change, we don't have to. This isn't a mandatory revolution. But for any of us that want to participate in it, it's available to us and well, this is a chance for us to all be equal and to participate in something that is beautiful I also think that violence is part of the old system that they know how to handle yeah. a violent uprising because they, they've done it since the beginning so there, there does have to be a different way of saying we want to play a new game you John know? Lennon was very articulate on that. He says that if you're violent, they've got a system for that. They'll just like, if you're violent, like, violence is a crime. You've got to go to prison now. Like, so, like, you know, but, like, so that's it. You're out of the game. It's like, you know, if you're complaining about your Verizon account, you know, like, uh, oh, my Verizon is not working. There's something wrong. Da, 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 like that. If you, like, you have to do it really cleverly, don't you? You have to go, yes, oh no, of course, no, I appreciate what you're saying, it's just the text bundle, da, 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 and this isn't working or whatever. If you ever go, look, you fucking go, it's like, no, I'm sorry, you lost. They can hang yeah. up on you once you do that. You know, you can't, so one, if you go off the frequency, you've, you're part of the problem, in it. And that's why that Solzhenitsyn quote, which I said on The View of all programs yesterday, I was quoting Solzhenitsyn on The View. <laughs> I don't even know who Solzhenitsyn is. <laughs> but Solzhenitsyn was a Russian dissident and writer who was putting gulags under, I think, Stalin. But he, he, uh, what he said was, was, is the line between good and evil runs not between nations, creeds, religions, colours or cultures, but through every human heart. That it's in all of us. That it's in all of us. So if we become violent, then well, we're on the wrong side. If we're like, you know, if you think of it, the extremists of ISIS and the extremists in our own government, they need each other. They get on to create more extremism, more terror, more fear, more violence. People get more frightened and angry in the Middle East because there's bombings. More people join ISIS. More people join ISIS. They do more bombings. More people vote Republican. So that they need each other. They need each other. So we have to sort of go, well, you, we'll leave you crazy extremists, motherfuckers, to your deal. We're here in the humanity business of you know believe what you want to believe as long as you don't want to hurt no one and we'll support you regardless of what book you're into i uh, got time for one more question over here right. hi russell um, hello mate so uh, my question was you mentioned earlier about the media not really uh, being part of the problem because you're not going to hear anything about being more spiritual there i do watch your uh, 
YouTube series, The Trues. And I Thanks, was, True <laughs> News. <laughs> that's right. And I was just wondering if you were planning on expanding that at all. I watched the one with um, Alec Baldwin, and I thought it was more of a uh, more of a talk show type of format. And I was just curious if if it, that couldn't help start your revolution. Do you think it's a good idea? Thanks, mate. Well, yeah, we are going to try to do it. Like, uh, the truth is like I analyse media, like I lo watch a lot of Fox News, and it's so funny. If you watch it, this is quite a good trick, actually. Like, mm -hmm. say there's someone in your life that you can't stand them, you don't like them or something. Like, because I had one. There was a producer I used to work with when I was on drugs, and so I was probably, <laughs> like, he really used to really annoy me. But just to give you some context, I was taking crack and heroin at work. <laughs> so I am not blameless <laughs> in the scenario. It's almost like the guy was under pressure or something, <laughs> working under untenable conditions well like my mate Matthew goes to like goes, I fucking can't stand that guy he fucking annoys me I hate him I hate him and my mate Matt goes just pretend that he's a uh, he said Alan Partridge like that's a <laughs> British TV sitcom character but I suppose it's comparable to I don't know Cliff from Cheers or something like that or Kramer you know like Kramer is lovely he just goes just pretend that he's like a sitcom character and like you're just watching it and, like, like, and I started doing that and it was really great <laughs> you know I just sort of like, started to like <laughs> Him. Like wow, what's he going to say now? Oh my God, we, are we actually doing this? All right, okay. <laughs> so like I said, mate, turned my life into sort of a comedy show. I liked it, and uh, um, the same with Fox News. Like if you like watch Bill O'Reilly and Sean Hannity, like they're comedy characters, they're really good. Like Bill, Bill O'Reilly, no, no, I'm not doing it. No, listen to me. And it's like, oh wow, I love you. And, 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 like, and like sort of Sean Hannity's whining confusion. <laughs> what, what? <laughs> it's sort of like okay, sort of like interesting, <laughs> but they're so confused. It makes me love them. Um, so like that's how the truth comes from that idea of like just like oh my god, dude, what are you saying? Do you actually think those things? Like it's funny, you know. And like so yeah, I I, I like doing that true news. I think we're going to do more of it, and we want other people actually to send us their own stuff, and you know we'll give people the graphics so that they can make it. I think it have to be good if we're putting it under our logo, but like uh, people can do what they want. Well, what if you got a call from a, from a big media company to do this? Ooh, that's TV, good one. Would you do it? I guess we'd have to. Ah, uh, we'd have a vote. Yeah, we'd have a vote. Say, so, like, these people are offering us this money now. They are owned by Disney. So, and Disney, I don't know if you know this, but they support the Nazis. So, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then there are no Nazis now, as far as we know. So that's that's moot. But like, uh, so uh, do you want us to? It means that we have more money. We, they, these, this is what they've assured us. They've assured us that we can keep our content the same. Because I mean, I don't know with Sirius XM. I mean, this look at we. We're saying what we want. Like, you can come on Sirius and go. You should overthrow the government. Don't participate. Collectivize. Get on the streets. Don't pay your mortgage. Don't pay your credit card bills not on your own you maniac organize a committee in a group <laughs> and do it then and say we the people of this town of this district aren't paying our credit card bills until we're fairly represented in government right like you know it's like and so i can say that i'm serious but i bet that serious is owned by someone right surely that's i mean if you go back far enough like isn't comcast about to buy time warner they'll have they'll have more power than the soviet union ever did like there's be a board of people that are just deciding this is the information you're having this is the information you're having this is the information already 93 percent of American media is owned by, like, I don't know, six organisations. It's the same in my country, our country no better. You know, so like, uh, we're already living under that kind of tyranny. So I guess like, if we did get that offer, I don't know. I don't, I don't know. Yeah. Probably it's best not to. It's well, you know, the to. thing is, you can say whatever you want as long as they can make money off of it. That's the important thing, you know. At the end of the day, it doesn't make a profit. I see. You know? I see. Well, we'll have to find a way. I mean, in the end, it will have to be disrupted. Like, uh, sort of like, uh, like with Exxon, they made that $45 billion, the biggest profit any corporation's ever made. And they make that from like, you know, now they want to go into more complicated areas to get resources and fuels right so but you know like that is actually it would only take 15 years to transfer to completely renewable energy it, they, that's like a true thing it's like a true thing and we just don't ever have that information in our minds because exxon can't make the obscene amount of money that they require to be exxon that's why i think revoke some corporate charters break down exxon shut them down shut down monsanto it can be done you know it's sort of exciting to think about it if we just go we don't want monsanto no more we don't want a massive conglomerate going around the world copywriting seeds messing up local farms messing with our ecology we don't want it we don't 
don't we pe- we we're the people. Hello, we don't want it. Like, how, where did their corporate rights become more important than our individual rights? Corporate was meant to be a temporary organisation that had a particular function and then was disbanded. They should go back to that idea. You can build this bridge, then fuck off. You know, what I mean, it shouldn't be like now we live forever like gods, tyrannising people, stomping over people. You know, the UN have revealed that all organic, localised agriculture can feed the world. It's an illusion that that, that, that you need these industries. They're telling us they need that, that that we need them. They need us. They need us. The minute we stop cooperating, the minute we disobey, it's over on every single thing. Think of a massive, insurmountable idea like uh, you know McDonald's, massive, all those restaurants. If every if we just go, I'm not going to eat McDonald's no more. That's it. I've already made that decision. God, I miss those milkshakes. But I've already made that decision. <laughs> Fuck those hot apple things. Though. But like you know, I've already made that. <laughs> but like. Like, all it takes is for us to just go, oh, yeah, rationally, let's just not do that now. And th- then it all begins to change. Then it changes. Yeah. You know, this is the first time I've ever done this show where I really wished I could have watched the people listening to see who was screaming yes and who was punching the radio. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been amazing. Revolution is the book. Russell Brand, everybody. Thank, Thank you, you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, mate. Thank you. Cheers.